If you see the classification of nervous system in human beings, the nervous system is basically categorized into two parts, CNS and PNS. What this CNS stands for? Central nervous system. And what is this PNS? Peripheral nervous system. What is central nervous system? What does it comprise of? The central nervous system is made up of two organs. Those are the brain and the spinal cord. Brain and spinal cord together comprise the central nervous system. Central nervous system is just like a CPU of a computer. You are using a desktop or a laptop. It will be having a CPU, central processing unit. In the same way, in our body, the processing of various information data the sense whatever the stimuli, whatever the changes in the environment and whatever. So, it is processed in our central nervous system. That is the brain and spinal cord. What is peripheral nervous system? The brain and spinal cord are connected to different body parts through the peripheral nervous system. Again, the peripheral nervous system PNS is divided to two. One is cranial nervous system and the other one is spinal nerves. Here we can see the picture of brain and spinal cord. Spinal cord is the extension of the brain. So this brain and spinal cord, these two together called central nervous system. And we can see some nerves arising from the brain. We call them as cranial nerves. And we see some nerves arising from the spinal cord to the peripheral sides. We call them as spinal nerves. So this cranial and spinal nerves together, they constitute the peripheral nervous system. So this is the uh, categorization, classification of the nervous system. So now we are at this point in the central nervous system, we are at the point of brain. So what is this brain? What is its function? What are the various parts of it? Let us see. Brain is an organ, important organ of the nervous system which is made up of very soft tissue, which comprises a lot of water. Most of our brain is made up of water. It is very sensitive and delicate organ. As it is very sensitive, very delicate, very important, it has to be well protected. See, the delicate organs and important organs of our body are well protected by the skeletal system. You see your heart and lungs are protected by the ribcage in your chest cavity as they are very sensitive, delicate as well as very important organs. In the same way, the brain is also very delicate, sensitive, important, complex organ. It is protected in a hard bony skull called as cranium. So cranium is a hard bony skull. It is made up of some bones which do not have any joints, all the bones are fixed together. So it is like a shell which gives protection to the blows. Something may fall on your head or you may fall down and hit something. So in such cases, the cranium, it gives protection to the brain. So cranium is also called as skull. Inside the cranium, here the brain is embedded. The brain is again covered by some layers, membranes. So here there are some membranes that are surrounding the brain. Above the membranes there is a cranium. These membranes are filled with some fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid. So this cerebrospinal fluid, it gives nourishment protection to the brain. So this is how the brain is protected and this is the place where the brain is located. Now let us see what are the parts of the brain. The brain is mainly divided into three parts according to the functions they carry out. Actually what are the functions of brain? So we already discussed that we have some extra abilities when compared to other organisms, other animals. What are those? We have intelligence. We have different sensors, different uh, centers in our brain to receive the different information, to read the different information. 
So the brain it consists of different centers to identify the colors, to recognize the colors, to recognize the smells, to recognize the different orders or flavors, to recognize different tastes, to appreciate the aesthetic beauty, to appreciate the music. So we have different centers to listen the sounds, understand the sounds, analyze the sounds. So this is all done in this part of the brain which we call it as forebrain. So this upper part of the brain which mainly consists of cerebrum is called as forebrain. The forebrain consists of cerebrum. So here it has got various centers, auditory center, olfactory center for reception of smell, auditory center for reception of sounds. So all this. So here you, our sense organs are connected to these centers where the changes in the environment are analyzed and understood there. And forebrain is the place where the memory, the information is stored in our brain. We can memorize many things. You have to memorize your answers, questions and different things, formulae, definitions, all these things for your examination. This is all done in your forebrain where the information is data is stored in that and you can get back the data. Not only storing the information, your brain, your forebrain has got another capability that is logical thinking, problem solving. So you have some question in your mind. So you are thinking of the question for a long time. You are doing some kind of experiments based on that question or you are doing some kind of research, you are referring something there. You may relate so many things what you have referred and finally you may come to a conclusion. That means you are coming, you are finding a solution to your problem. That is the ability of your brain. So you have intelligence, you have application of the knowledge, the learned knowledge, whatever the basic things we learn in our daily life or in your classroom or in your laboratory, you may apply these things at some other place to solve a problem. That is all done by the brain. Now here which part of the brain is responsible for all this is the forebrain or the cerebrum. So here we have learned that the forebrain is the part of the brain which is the major center for reception of various information. That is the hearing, sensing of smell and the sight all these are associated to this forebrain. Here it has got a special part to identify your hunger and feeling full. So by that you can decide whether to stop eating or eat more. So this is all happens in the forebrain. Now if it is the, those are the functions of the forebrain then what does this midbrain and hindbrain does? If you look at this picture you can see this major part here you can see so many folds in the brain just like our intestines. Do you know why these many folds are there in your brain? Because when there are folds, a lot of surface can be fit into small area. So your brain has got so many narrow cells and all these narrow cells are fitted in a very small area because of these folds. So folds, they provide large surface area. So here you can see so many folds in the cerebrum and this part of the brain is called as midbrain and you can see the midbrain, its continuation with this particular part called as hindbrain. So the brain is divided into three parts, forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. So this hindbrain consists of pons, medulla and cerebellum. Three parts are there. Let us see what is the function of this midbrain and this hindbrain. The voluntary functions, your consciousness, your decisions, your ideas, your thoughts, your appreciation, your enjoyment, everything is there in the forebrain. But so many things happen without your notice, without your thinking, without your decision. You are conscious, unconscious, involuntary actions takes place in your body, which are very essential, which should happen continuously to keep you stay alive. What are they? Your digestion. You are not giving any instruction to your intestines to, yes, I have eaten an apple. Come on, digest it. You are not giving any instruction. Automatically the apple is digested. Who is controlling that? You are not always telling your heart to come on, beat, beat. No, you are not giving any instructions to your heart. But it is instructed. It is controlled. 
that is done involuntarily. So this way, in your body, many activities are involuntary, many movements are involuntary. So these involuntary movements are controlled by the midbrain and hindbrain. They take up the control of these involuntary functions. Certain activities in our body like blood pressure, control of blood pressure, salivation, vomiting. If something goes wrong into your throat, you vomit it. So that vomiting, all these are controlled by this medulla. Medulla is a part of the hindbrain. Medulla controls those. Vomiting, salivation, blood pressure. So all these involuntary functions are controlled by the midbrain and this hindbrain. What does this cerebellum does? The cerebellum does, it helps in maintaining a balance in your posture. We are able to maintain a balance in our posture. It is because of the cerebellum. Right? So if you know physics well, how we are able to stand, we are keeping our body to the center of gravity. We are bringing the center of gravity to the center of our body always by making the weight adjustment. Otherwise, we may fall down. But who is making this balance? Who is adjusting your body parts according to their weight equally on both sides not to make you fall? You may give different postures while dancing, while playing, while fighting, while jumping. Even then you are not falling. Your body weight is adjusted all the times equally on both sides of the point center of gravity. So by that, that is maintained by whom? That is nothing but the cerebellum. It maintains the posture of your body. Means you are able to balance your body because of the cerebellum. If there is any defect with the cerebellum, if it does not function properly, you lose your balance. It all happens when you wake up suddenly from sleep. Your cerebellum is not totally active. So, you may be falling like this and you may not be able to control your posture. So, when you sleep on upstairs on terraces, if you wake up suddenly, do not walk quickly. Just stay calm for some time. Let your brain completely activated. Then you can come down from the terraces. Otherwise, there may be a chance of falling from the steps or from the ceiling. That is from that slab. So, it is very useful in controlling, in maintaining the balance or the posture of the body. Sometimes it loses the balance when the person is drunkard, cerebellum is affected, the person is not able to maintain the balance. So you may, you might have seen the drunkards, the over drunken people walking on the roads, losing their control, their bodies are not controlled, their postures are not controlled. So not balanced. So that is what done by the cerebellum. So involuntary functions of our body, the regular activities which carries on even though you sleep, you take rest, your conscience is at rest. But your heartbeat is going on, your breathing is going on, your blood pressure is maintained. All this happens even though when you sleep. So that is controlled by these parts. So you can see the various parts of the brain and taking the various kinds of responsibilities that is to control the movements of your muscles. So when there is no control on the movement of the muscles, you cannot maintain any posture, you cannot maintain anything even though you cannot speak. When you are speaking, the muscles in your tongue, the muscles in your jaws, the muscles in your lips and cheeks all must be coordinated. Otherwise, you are not able to produce a sound. And at the same time, the, mus the muscles which are there in the vocal cords, they should be contracted and relaxed. So that is also should be controlled. If movements are not controlled well, you are not able to execute any action. You might have seen the damage to the nerves happened in certain cases like people who are paralyzed. If you see a person suffering from paralysis, paralyzed body parts, if any of the side, either left side or right, uh, right side is paralyzed, you can see they are not able to produce any kind of movements in their body parts. So it is very pathetic condition. So that is that shows us the importance of the nervous system. We are able to live so comfortably, we are able to defend ourselves, we are able to protect ourselves, we are able to do various activities, physical activities, 
movements, movement in our bodies, movement from one place to another place. This is all achieved by controlling the various muscles. Movements are controlled by the nervous system. So, in this lesson, we have learned the point that movements in animals are controlled by the nervous system. Nervous system is made up of central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system is made up of cranial nerves and spinal nerves. This is what we have learned. And we learned one more important thing. In many cases, to produce a response to a stimuli, to make the responses quick, instead of taking the information to the brain for analysis, spinal cord takes the decision itself. Such responses are very quick. Such quick responses are called as reflexes. And the part which involves in taking a reflex action is called as reflex arc.